Good morning, Psychic Medium Danielle Garcia here with your energy forecast for the week. Today is November 2nd, 2020, and how's everybody doing? You know, last week was a lot of energy between Mercury retrograde, the Schumann resonance spiking quite frequently, you know, full moon, Halloween, veil being thin. Uh, yeah, heck of a week. It was definitely headache central at my house. I think I had two or three migraines last week. Definitely not fun. I just checked the Schumann resonance and it is vibing at a 61 right now. So prepare, prepare, prepare. Hydrate, ground, um, you know, grab some Kambaba Jasper, obsidian, black tourmaline, um, anything that makes you feel grounded, centered, be very be very um, plugged in to how your body is responding to certain foods as well. During Schumann resonance, it seems to be that things that we are um, sensitive to, you know, react at a rate and speed that normally they don't. So let's say hypothetically something brings on inflammation in your body, maybe just a little bit when we're having those spikes, typically for empaths and sensitives, you're going to get a big inflammatory response. Or if you break out in hives or a rash, um, it's going to be more extensive than what it normally would be. I'm not quite sure why that is, but it just seems to be the, the running theme, if you will. Mercury goes direct this week on the 4th. Very interesting that Mercury is still in retrograde during our presidential election. I don't believe that's a coincidence by any chance. We got lots and lots and lots of planetary stuff going on this week. Uranus right now is closest to Earth, and it will be at its closest points to Earth all during the month of November. So let's talk a little bit about that. Uranus is all about pushing boundaries. It's about rebellion. It's about pushing barriers. It's about pushing buttons. It's new ideas. Uranus is about big change and loves, loves, loves surprises. Hmm. Mercury retrograde. Uranus at its closest point to Earth during November and a presidential election. Wow. Uranus is also about shock value. So don't be surprised that we've got a lot and lot of lot of different conflict coming in here in the U.S., as well as many of us will be pushed out of our comfort zone. And even as I say that, I'm just getting waves and waves and waves and waves of chills, which is always my guide's way of confirming things for me. The U.S. election is happening at a time of immense planetary energy. So that sets up for these big surprises, big shockers. So what does that mean for those of us that live here in the U.S.? Be prepared. Ride the wave. Don't expect that there's going to be answers at, you know, 11 o'clock midnight on election day. This is going to go on for quite some time. We're not going to have a real answer as to who's in office for a while. I don't have a definitive timeline on that because the energies are still out there. There's still a lot of balls up in the air, so to speak meaning lots of choices, lots of issues. It's almost like when my guides show it to me, it's like a, a gosh, I can't remember the word, um, flow chart. You know, if this, then that, if this, then that, if this, then that, and so on and so on and so forth. Right now, the best thing that we all can do on this planet, especially with the energies as they present this week, is to align with our highest vibration which is our soul. It's about taking time every single day to consciously connect with spirit, consciously connect with creator, consciously connect with source, consciously connect with our spirit. Something that I do that really, really helps me is each and every day I ask, I set intention, show me truth. Allow me to see, allow me to sense, allow me to feel, allow me to know pure and complete truth. We're heading into a lot of time of lies, of conspiracy, of negativity. And 
we will be told so many different things. We're going to have some people telling us the sky is blue. Other people will tell us the sky is green. Other people will tell us the sky is black. Other people will tell us the sky is gray. What helps us to see truth is aligning with spirit, is aligning with our soul, is truly going into our gut instinct. So many spiritual teachers talk about ascension. This is the big fork in the road, guys. This is when we get to decide, are we going to align with creator and allow creator to give us information so that we can go forward in a higher vibration? Or will we allow ourselves to become inundated with lies and fear and negativity and conspiracy? It's a choice, right? You can choose to have a clouded outlook. You can choose to adopt someone else's truth. You can choose to align with the highest vibration of high and allow that to be your guiding force. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot, a lot, a lot of stuff going on. Planetary, vibrationally, politically, universally, and here on planet Earth, right? we got a lot of stuff going on. How do you sort all through that? Well, it starts with you, right? Instead of worrying about what's going to happen next year, what's going to happen next month, what's going to happen next week, what about this moment of now? Where are you in this moment of now? Are you vibing negativity? Are you vibing fear? What are you talking about all day long? Are you telling your friends about the shit show that's going on? Or are you telling them, hey, ground yourself. Stay true to yourself. Have faith, have knowing, continue to connect with the divine. What are you spewing? Now, again, it's not all love, light, rainbows, and unicorns 24-7. I get it. Gee whiz. We're all humans. We can't be vibing 100% light all the time. Ooh, just heard a voice behind me say, or can we? Hmm, something to think about. I do believe it's important to vent. I do believe it's important to release. But I also believe that it's important not to keep vibing on that same stuck, stagnant, old story energy. When we get stuck in that, we're stuck in that vibe, right? So it's important to rise above that. It's important to see beyond that. This week, watch your anger, watch your reaction. And coming from someone who has anger issues, (laughs) yeah, that's saying a lot. That's a big, ooh, stop sign for me. I need to watch my anger. I need to watch what I'm plugging into. And if I do get angry and if I do find myself reactive, it's time for me to pull the reins back, put my ego on a timeout, connect completely with source and say, show me. Show me truth. Show me what I need to know. Show me what I need to see. Show me what I need to feel exactly right now in this moment for my highest best good. And if we all concentrated on that, it would be highest best good for all, right? Hmm. Again, something to think about. Show me truth. Allow me to feel it. Allow me to sense it. Allow me to know it. And allow me to receive it. We are definitely in a fork in the road right now. Uh, Lots of energies coming in, lots of fear, lots of faith. You know, it's this huge convergence of positive and negative that's going on. In this time and through the end of the year, because of what's happening now on our planet and because of the way that the planets are aligning and how they will continue on through the end of 2020, It creates a big doorway, a gateway, if you will, for other beings to make their presence known. So if you begin to see things, feel things, sense things that are not of the norm, that are not of the human norm, check in. Is this a positive or this a negative? Because as we know in this universe, it is created with light and dark, isn't it? So know that that is also a huge potential of happening for those of us that have the ability to see, sense, and feel those other unearthly energies. Have caution. Have understanding. Trust your gut. Again, 
ask to see truth. Shadow of Mercury retrograde continues on till the 12th. You know, this is the time where we're losing, we're releasing, we're disconnecting from psychic debris, from old held up um, uh, threads of what we've released during Mercury retrograde. So don't be surprised if you think you let go of an issue and then suddenly, ooh, there's a little triggering, there's a little doubt, there's a little uh, right in your face. That's your opportunity again. Cut cords, release, kick it to the curb. Bye-bye. I'm done. Or maybe, just maybe, you have something else to learn from it. Sometimes when our old habits and behaviors come back up to seek to, you know, be right in front of us and kick us in the face, so to speak, it's our opportunity to look and say, wow, that really doesn't feel good anymore. I need to think of something different. I need to act differently. So I am pulling cards from the Lightworker Oracle by Alana Fairchild. I absolutely love, love, love her work. Let's see what comes up. I have to tell you, this is like the third time I've tried recording this because the first time my recording had no sound. And the second time there was a buzzing noise and then an orb flew by again. <laughs> so it is a Monday in the office. All right, first card. Life Path. Ooh, what a beautiful card. Check this one out. I'm going to try to get it so you can see it beyond the glare here. All right, Life Path. What does that have to do with this week? You know, they show embryo. They show infant. They show this beautiful angel from above. They show the infant's uh, third eye opening, the crown, crown all opening. To me, again, this is about truth. This is about connecting with the all that is. This is about connecting with creator. This is about receiving truth. Don't allow the darkness, the negativity, the fear, um, the evil forces that continue to poke us, as my guide is saying in my ear, don't allow them to wear you down. We are unique individuals, yet we, were part, we are part of the all that is, correct? So if we find ourselves in conflict and if we find ourselves divided, we become weakened. But if we look for the commonality that we all share, if we look on that to build on, we will definitely choose the right option with this fork in the road. As cards are flying under my table now, hold on just one second. Wow, I just love the way the cards are a confirmation. This card is called an invitation to connect. Again, sorry about the glare here. So an invitation to connect, absolute confirmation about connecting to the higher self, connecting to spirit, connecting to your soul, connecting to source. I love Oracle cards. I absolutely do. I, I'll never stop collecting them because Everybody's always coming out with a new deck, with new images, and with new vibes, and I just, I absolutely adore that. This one is called the Fifth Ray of Intellectual Knowledge. Hmm. Very interesting. So we see in the center here, oh, I really wish I could, there, that's a little bit better. We see in the center here, this beautiful woman surrounded with light, and then we see a lot of people that are grayish blue, kind of looking a little negative, looking at each other. To me, again, confirmation. Don't allow these outside sources to affect you. It's easy to get caught up in that, you know, snowball of negativity. If this person saying this and this media source saying this and this newspaper saying that and this, you know, actor or star or singer or sports person saying this, that, and the other. It's easy to fall into that trap, right? What is your soul saying? What is your soul saying when you say, show me truth? Show me light. Allow me to feel it. Allow me to sense it. Allow me to receive it. Allow me to know it. Definitely something to think about this week. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Get ready. Big changes are ahead of us all. 
Now we can choose to struggle against those, or we can choose to ride the wave. It's a choice, right? Have a blessed week, and just prepare. Keep asking to see truth.